to remind ourselves that He is risen. We need to remind ourselves that there is nothing else. That there is nothing else up before Jesus.
17, it says, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fail and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. I know there are people here who are going through trials, who are facing things in their lives, where they just need Jesus. Where I'm here to tell you that Jesus wants to meet you this morning, right where you are. But he needs you to just open up your heart and say, Jesus, here I am. I need you to refine me. I need you to purify me. I need you to clean my hands, purify my heart, Jesus. Just like gold is refined, gold and silver is refined. I want to be refined and purified. I am here, God. I am a vessel, Lord. Do with me. Do with me what you want. If you are that person in this place this morning that just says, you know what, God, here I am. Send me. If you're here this morning, you say, man, I am facing some trials, Jesus, but I am going to rejoice in your name. I'm going to ask you to just meet him at the altar and just tell him, God, here I am. Not my will, God, but yours be done. Here I am, Jesus. Send me, Father. Oh, clean my hands, purify. Here's my life. I want to be true. 
close off uh, this series on good works, right? It's been, it's been amazing. It's been some amazing services. They've been some amazing topics. It's just been, it's just been awesome. And, and I get the honor of closing this out of, and it's dealing with hospitality, right? And I think, uh, I'm like, man, I guess they picked the per perfect person to do that, right? Well, thank you, Angelique. Some person believes that. We, uh, we, we really do. We, Karina and I, we enjoy, we just enjoy, um, uh, having people over. We enjoy being with people. We enjoy just the whole thing of it, just everything that comes with, with hospitality, right? Uh, um, I can remember, I can remember uh, ever since we got married, I remember we, we had this little apartment over here off a of vineyard, and it was like a little two-bedroom, right? It was two-bedroom, maybe one two-bedroom, and it was small. I think we just had, we just had like a kitchen. We just had the stove and the refrigerator, and right next to it was, uh, was the kitchen, our kitchen table, and then right next to that was, uh, was our couch, uh, you know, where we could watch TV. But you know what? That, uh, when we look back, and, and, show, and if you ask her, she'll agree with me, that was probably one of the best times that we had kids because it was always full it was always like people we were inviting people over all the time and it's like we, we didn't we didn't care that we didn't have this this small place or we didn't care that it wasn't this big home we didn't care that we didn't have that 65 inch tv we just really just wanted to have people over and just spend time with people and that's really what hospitality is is, is, is that amen and so I, I want to look into the definition of what a uh, hospitality, what the Bible, uh, not the Bible, the definition says, the dictionary says, the friendly and generous reception and entertainment of guests, visitors, or strangers, right? So it says, or strangers, because I think when we think of being hospitable to somebody, we think of people we know. Right, we think of of family, we think of friends, right? We think of of people who who we have in contact with, people who we know, people maybe somebody who who might know somebody else, right? It's just, but it's always going to be somebody that we know, and it's just, I just love that the definition said or strangers, because we we shouldn't we shouldn't uh, be choosy. We're going to be hospitable. We're going to have that hosp hosp hospitality mentality. Is we've got to be willing to invite. Anyone and everyone, amen. We can't be we can't be picky. We can't be choosy, amen. Um, I, one of the things that I, I think about also is, you know, when when you invite people over. Have you guys ever had this? Would you invite people over and then somebody says, "Well, who's going to be there?" Right? And me and Karina, we always talk about it. We're like, "Well, what does it matter? Who cares? Do you want to be here or not?" If not, I'll go on to the next person right over here. You know what I mean? And, and we'll just invite them. Hey, don't worry about it. Well, you, you get invited next week. Forget about it, right? Come on now. Hallelujah. 
But it, but it, that's what it goes by. Sometimes, you know, it, 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 we, we think and, and we, we go with depending on who the crowd is, depending on who it is. You know, the older crowd doesn't like hanging out with the younger crowd. We got that talked about the other day, right? It's like our church is divided into age groups. It's like these are like the, the wise ones. This is where all the wisdom sits. And as the wisdom starts going, wisdom, wisdom, you know, all of a sudden it starts getting younger right over here. And it's like they're not as wise, but they're still wise. And I, I don't know about you guys over here. You know what I mean? It's like, man, we're working on that. So we're, that's why we like flipping everything around, moving things around. That way, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm really not. No, I'm just kidding. I am. I am. You guys are amazing over there. But if you say you're not, then I, that's, that's something that God needs to deal with you about. Now you guys make me feel like I'm at a comedy show. I got to get back to the word of God here. So I, I, I had pulled it up in the Greek, and it's, it's this word, uh, philozenia. I don't know. It's, it's hospitableness. And the word is translated into entertain strangers, right? So when you look at it back in, in, in those days, it's like really what that meant, hospitality, what it meant was entertaining strangers, that's really what it was. It wasn't entertaining your friends. It wasn't entertaining your family, although that was part of it. But the definition of it, of what that word meant, was entertaining strangers. So this word is translated into entertaining strangers, which is made up of two words, right? Philos, which means loving, and then xenos, which means stranger. So it's pretty much loving strangers, right? That's the gospel. The gospel is that we're supposed to go out and we're supposed to love the lost. We're supposed to love the stranger. We're supposed to love the sinner. We're supposed to just love everybody. There shouldn't be um, a, a difference on who we love. God has God given his life for us while we were still sinners. And so we, in return, we need to do the same thing, you know, and, and, and just love others and love strangers and love everybody that God puts in our path. Hospitality is the offer to extend the privileges of community to those who do, who do not have the standing to expect it, right? Strangers. So hospitality is inviting those who maybe don't have that good reputation, inviting those who maybe don't have as many friends as you do. Because I know all of you guys, you guys, you guys are all liked. You guys have like all kinds of people over at your house. I see it on Facebook. Y'all need to start inviting me. I'm that lonely person, so I'm just kidding. I don't even have a Facebook, so I couldn't see that to begin with. But hospitality is a gift, and not everyone has that gift right? Hospitality is a gift. It says so in the Word of God. And, and, and I can think of, of, of a few people um, that have that gift, right? And, and I think of my sister. My sister, uh, she, she's, just, she's just amazing, and she has that gift of hospitality. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter where you come from. If, if we were to bring somebody, we brought people during Christmas, during Thanksgiving, during, you know, which are supposed to be holidays. And she's like, yeah, just bring them over. Just bring them over, man. There, there, there's always going to be enough food. And it, she doesn't even care, right? And this is how you know when somebody is hospitable, okay? I'm, I, let, me, let me share with some. And this is where I think we're hospitable to a certain extent, okay? Because at my sister's house, them kids are jumping off her second-story balcony they're throwing toys off the balcony. They're jumping on the couches. They're running around up and down. When Karina first started going over to my sister's house, she's just like, I think she was getting anxiety. Like, oh, my gosh, tell these kids to stop. Huh? Right, babe? She's like, dang, tell them to stop. But, but that's how, who my sister is. And even, and, and like, like I was to say, we've raised our kids like, do not, when we leave to somebody else's house, do not jump on their couches. Do not run around. Do not do this. Do not do that. Do, that. do you do that at, at our house? No. So what makes you think you can do it at their house, right? That's what I'm saying. My sister just doesn't care. She doesn't care. She's like, oh, run around. Oh, it's fine. Just let them go. I'm like, hey, okay. Well, you're going to pay the hospital when they break their arm, right? No, I'm just kidding. But that's it. She, she's who comes to mind. Another person that comes to mind is, is Ruby and Andrew. 
They're the, the exact same. They just have a gift. It's a gift that God has just given them. They, they've entertained strangers, right? At one of the parties, a FedEx guy came in to deliver something, or, or Amazon guy, and next thing you know, he's sitting down, at, and he's, get, he's eating tacos, and he's eating this, and he's walking back to his truck with the plate. That's a gift. I'd be like, hey, bro, just leave the, leave the package at the door. Why are you in my backyard? Why are you in my backyard? Just leave it at the door you, where you leave it everybody else, right? But they have a gift. Uh, what is a couple of weeks? A couple of weeks ago, Nick, right? We, uh, we had a men's breakfast, uh, what, two weeks ago? And, uh, man, they entertained us the whole entire day. It's supposed to be like a two-hour two thing, and we were there for, like, the whole day, Right? And then we, start, we started playing games, and then Nick's like, man, I think it was like 3 o'clock or something. Nick's like, man, I got to go. I got chores to do. Ruby goes, what do you got to do? He's like, man, I got to go home and do laundry. What was her response? What would your response been? All right, goodbye. We'll see you later. Ruby said, go get your laundry. Bring it back. We have a washer and dryer. Nuts, right? That's crazy. I'd be like, uh, you better stay off my washer and dryer. Hey, all right, we'll, play, we'll catch you next time, man. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you on Sunday. But that's hospitality. That's what I'm saying. That's a gift. When it's a gift, it's just everything is just natural. Everything is like it, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It's like they just, they just love you. You know, and, and that's why they say that it's, it's just a gift. And uh, in 1 Peter 4 9, it says, cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal or a place to stay. Cheerfully, right? Ralph just talked about cheerfully giving, right? And so everything must be done in cheer. So it's cheerfully share your home. And when people have that, go, that, that gift, it's just, it's, just a, it's just like a joy to them. My sister loves having those kids run around. She just loves having that, that house loud. And it, that kind of stuff doesn't bother her. And so that, that's how you know that, that gift is because she does it with joy. And then in, uh, in, in verse 11 of that same chapter, it says, If any man ministers that is to serve, let him do it with the ability which God, has, uh, has, uh, which God gives to him. So this goes to all the, uh, the rest of us who don't have that gift, who care if the kids are jumping around, who care if, if instead of three enchiladas they have six. You know what I mean? Who care about you? He's like, man, food's going to run This guy just eating everything. Like, dang. Like, man, we, we only ordered for like three people. This guy is eating for like six. I guess I'm not eating tonight. Right? So it says, so, so, this, so this, 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 this ministers to us. This is to us who don't have that gift. But he says, do it to the best of your ability. See, we still need to do it, but God understands that we don't have that gift. So we just need to do it to the best that we can. We need to do it to the best of our ability and then let God take, take, uh, take over from there. Amen? And so it, 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 even though we don't have that gift, we are still called to, to be hospitable. We're still called to entertain. We're still called to invite people over. We're still called to hang out with people. Hospitality is an offer to identify with outsiders and to treat them like insiders, right? That's really what it is. When somebody comes to your home, uh, the one thing we always, uh, we always tell people is uh, when they ask for something, it's like, hey, man, just go ahead and grab it. This is your home. If you want to go in the fridge, it's open. Just don't eat my lunch for tomorrow. But everything else... It's open. Get what you get, get, get. My home is your home. And that's, that's what we do. We can treat people who are not close to us, people who do we don't know, and we can treat them like we've known them for years. And that's the gospel. That's what the gospel is, is loving people in that way. Because that's how, that's how Jesus loved us, Right? Some of you were jacked up because you've told me your stories. And I'm like, man, how in the heck did Jesus love you? Clarence is like, don't, don't say nothing about me, bro. I won't see. That's my boy right there. 
Then I got I got Ralph right there too. Look at Ralph. What's up, Ralph? He like, what's he gonna say? I just gotta keep him on his toes. That's all. That's all I said it. Biblically, hospitality is treating strangers and friends alike, right? There's no difference. It is welcoming one another into our home, but not only that, is welcoming them into our lives. See, there's a difference. You can welcome somebody into your house, but are you welcoming them to be a part of your life? That's fellowship. That's discipleship. That's hospitality is making them a part of your life. And in the, in the New King James, it says, again, we have to be willing and able to open up our home to both friends and strangers. In Titus 1.8, it says, rather, he must enjoy having guests. He must enjoy having guests. This, in, in this scripture and in another one that I'm, I'm going to share in a minute um, over in 1 Timothy, let me just read it to you. It says, he must enjoy having guests in his home. Um, that is a characteristic of a church leader. Right? When you, when you read through those chapters, when you read through that section, when you read through 1 Timothy chapter 3, and we read that thing for like six months, I think, um, one of the qualities, one of the characteristics of a church leader is that we must enjoy having people into, in our home. So if you aspire to be a church leader, that means if you want to be a church leader, these are one of the things that you might want to start working on is enjoy pray and have God teach you how to enjoy having people over when that table gets scratched when that table gets broken just enjoying it I can remember uh man I think we had we had we had just moved into a house over uh, in Fontana um over the Hancock house, we love that house. We love all our houses. <laughs> but we love that house, and, and it, was, it was small again. I think we love the small, but we need to downsize. We need to downsize and get back to the small. But it, 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 it was amazing because uh, I, I remember we had, I don't know if, it, if we had like a fight or if we had like a, a it, it was a sports thing. And I remember her uncle one day brought this one guy, and he's like, hey, man, he had just texted, hey, is it cool if I bring this, this guy? Um, you know, he's from somewhere else, whatever, and I'm like, oh, yeah, cool, man, yeah, just bring them, it, you know, it doesn't matter, and so he brought them, and, and but the amazing thing about it is, though, he, even as he brought them, is like, we, be, we began uh, this relationship that was just amazing, you know what I mean, and, and uh, every now and again, I'll give him a text, every now and again, he'll give me a text, and it's like, God created something, right, all because, because somebody was willing to be open to allow somebody who was not part of his crowd, who was not part of, of who he knew, it was somebody who he didn't even know at all, I I mean, I locked all my doors and stuff because he was from Pomona, you know. So, no, I'm just kidding. I'm playing. I'm just playing. But, but you know, but allowing somebody to come in, and, and so I didn't just uh, allow him to come into my, uh, to, to our home. It's like we allowed him to become a part of our lives. And, and, and this beautiful friendship developed, amen. And that's what we are called. In Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 11, it's just that story of Jesus when he's on the boat, right? And he tells, uh, he tells Peter that he's going to make him a fisher of men, right? And that's what we are. We're supposed to be fishers of men. So how are we going to be able to fish for men if we never invite any of those fishes into our home? If we never allow the stranger to come in, that person that we don't know to come in, Jesus did both. He accepted and was hospitable. In Luke chapter 5, verse 27, he was eating with sinners. It says, later as Jesus left, uh, left the town, he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up, left everything, and followed him later. Uh, Levi held a banquet in his home with Jesus as the guest of honor. Many of, the, of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate uh, with them. But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Dang, that's crazy, huh? With such scum. This is, this is what uh, they look at to as strangers. Jesus answered them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who, who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. See, and that's all of us. We know we're sinners. There's, it says that there's, there's none righteous, not one. We wake up every morning and we're going to sin. 
Our first thought might be sin. Our first action might be sin. And, and even, the, even then, God still loves us. And so it's understanding that, that, that we are sinners and that we need Jesus and that we need to repent. In Luke chapter 19, verse 5, says, When Jesus came by, he looked at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Dang, that was crazy. Imagine, uh, hey, Ralph, I'm going to be at your guest today, brother. I need a, a, a T-bone steak. Now, make that a ribeye steak. No, that's Pedro. Pedro needs to, he still needs to make that steak. Right, but somebody comes up to you and just say, "Hey, I'm be a guest," and you're like, "Like, damn, okay." But the kids, as the kids, like, "Okay, cool," right? And so Jesus was teaching us that both we can be hospitable, but also accept hospitality, right? And 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 so that's 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 the way that we have to see and the way that we have to understand is there. There's two two ways that we can do this. Hospitality works two ways. One is somebody is going to serve you. But then at the same time, we need to also be serving others. Amen? So why do we need to be hospitable? It gives us the opportunity to serve others, right? I just said that. It gives us that opportunity to serve others. Service is a tangible way of, living, of, of loving one another. When we serve, we are humbly, humbling ourselves and putting the needs and desires of another in front of our own. That's, that's what it is to serve. And I, I think I think of uh, I think of like the Candelaria kids, right? Brendan and Clarence kids, and I, I I had shared it with them one time. I was like, I was just so proud. I was just so proud just to watch them one day. I don't know, and like the Holy Spirit was just showing me like their 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 hearts of servants is and, and, and God forgive me. I was I was just thinking I'm like man, you know, go get it yourself, right? Because pe people, and this is, it, and not only in their home, they've been at my house, and people have asked them, like, "Hey, hey, uh, Clarissa, can you get me this?" Oh, okay, and there she goes. Hey, Ariana, can you get me this? Oh, okay, and there she goes. Hey, Isa, can you get me this? And there she goes, right? And and I'm just thinking, like, like, man, get up and get it yourself, dude. It's like five feet apart uh, away. All you gotta do is get up and walk over and pick it up. But no, you had too many burritos, right? You can't get up. But, but that's the servant's heart. And that's what it says. When, when we're hospitable, it gives us, it gives us that, that, that uh, uh, opportunity to serve somebody. And so part, part of that is to serve. Jesus did not come to, say, to serve, but to be served, right? That's what he said. He said, I didn't come to serve, I mean, to, to be served. He said, I came to serve. He even got down and he washed his disciples' feet. And he's teaching us something. And he's always teaching us something. And he's teaching us how to be hospitable. And that's why he was saying, I, you know, I, I didn't come to, to, to be served. I came to serve. And we've got to have that same mentality. In Romans 12, 13, it says, when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. There's needs all through this place. And I'm not talking about just here in this room. I'm talking about in this city, in this state, in this world, especially in the time right now. There is so much need. And he's saying we need to be ready to help. We need to be ready to help. So it gives us an opportunity to serve. The other thing is hospitality, uh, hospitality, it's hospitality, yeah, I've been pronouncing that thing the whole round, you guys didn't say nothing. I, I was wondering why Pedro kept laughing like up here in the front. He's like, man, this guy does not know English. But I tell you, I do, okay? Hospitality allows us to deepen discipleship relationships. See, when we invite people into our home, it allows us and gives us the opportunity to be able to impart into somebody else. It allows us to be able to minister. It allows us to be able to help somebody else. Real life happens in our home 
amongst our family and welcoming people into it is the best way to give insight into how our family functions in all the messy ways. One of the biggest things I think uh, people don't like having people in their home often is because eventually how the house functions is going to be exposed, right? The reality is we can come to church and we can put on this mask. We can come to church and we can pretend that everything is all right. But the reality of it all is that we're not, that we're hurting, that we need help. And so having people over gives us that opportunity to minister to them. It gives you the opportunity to get to know somebody, to develop that relationship that will open up so that they can share what is really going on in their life, so that they can share and, and, and trust you, so that you can pray for them and help them and advise them on things that need to be done or things that they can do or things that need to be changed. That's what it is to be hospitable. That's why we need to invite people. That's why we need to have people come over, amen, because discipleship happens there. Discipleship happens in the home. Discipleship doesn't happen here. Teaching happens here. Discipleship happens in your home. Discipleship happens in my home. So when we welcome people, we cannot hide what really goes on in our homes. But most importantly, our kids also benefit from this. It allows them to strengthen their relationship with other people. So as you begin to have people over, our kids begin to learn what this lifestyle of the Christian walk really is and what it's all about, and it's about others. When you have people over and, and, and you're discipling them, your kids get to see impartation going on. They get to see these things. And so as they begin to see these things, they begin to understand what it's all about. And their relationship with people begin to grow. Amen? And so if you want to see your kids grow up and remain in the church, if you want to see your kids grow up and, and, be, and, and remain in ministry, is you've got to teach them. They've got to see it in your own home. I can remember... Uh, when we were youth pastors, I, I can remember one of the, the, the most often things that kids would always tell us when they were struggling and we would, we would try to minister to them was, but you don't know my parents. You don't know how they really are. You don't know how my dad talks to me. You don't know how my dad uh, treats, treats my mom. You don't know how my mom is. You don't know how they are. It's like you don't know them. You see the church people. I see the real people. That's heartbreaking, isn't it? But that's what we're teaching our kids. If, 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 we're not, if, if we're not teaching or showing them the right things, if we're pretending. And so our kids are watching us, and we're setting an example to them. Amen? Amen? I'm doing all the car, but let's repent right now. And the last thing I want to leave you with is hospitality provides a place to share the gospel. Right? It is different than discipleship. Discipleship is with a believer already, somebody who who's accepted Christ, somebody who who wants to grow in Christ, somebody who wants to really seek God and and but really doesn't know. That's 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 what discipleship is. When you open up your home and, and use it to share the gospel, it, it reaches and touches unbelievers, the stranger, right? This is what it's all really about, is the stranger, right? This is why we're here on Sunday mornings, is for the stranger. This is why we have Bible studies, is for the stranger. This is why we have all these events, is for the stranger. When we do our Easter events, we, we don't do it uh, wherever we do it, and, and, or when we do outreaches, we don't do it just because it makes us feel good. 
We do it because we want to see the stranger. We want to see the lost come to Christ. We want to see those who don't know Jesus come to have a relationship with Jesus. That's why we do it. And that's the gospel. And then so when, we, when, we, when we're hospitable and we open up our homes and we invite the strangers, it gives us that opportunity to share the gospel with them. Even if it's just when, as we pray over a meal. Even if, as we just begin to pray. It shows them. It opens up doors. Because they begin to ask questions. They'll ask questions. And those are all open doors to be able to share the gospel. In Acts chapter 16, verse 29, says, Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Remember, they were in jail, in prison at this time. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. It's in the house. It wasn't their house. It was the jailer's house. And this is why Jesus was telling you we need to be hospitable and we need to accept hospitality. It's because no matter which one it is, when you're in the home and when you're at the table and when you're sharing that meal and that conversation, it's an opportunity to share the good news. It's an opportunity to share the gospel with somebody who maybe has never heard it before. Or even remind somebody who might have grown up in church and they just completely have just walked away. It gives them an opportunity. That's what it's all about. And that's what we need to think is we need to create opportunities. What opportunities are we missing out on today? What opportunities are we missing out because we're working too much? What opportunities are we missing out because we just don't like having people over? What opportunities are we missing today for whatever reason? I don't want them to see that my kids are really just crazy. Lexi's crazy. I'm telling you, y'all don't know Lexi. Y'all know church Lexi. I'm just, she's like, she's dad, all right, dad, wait till we get home. She's, yeah. Her and my wife really scare me. We do, y'all. I don't ever talk bad about them. Karina's like, yeah, right. She's like, yeah, right. I do, but they know, they know I love them. And everybody knows I'm kidding. I'm sorry, love. I love you. Dang, girl, you're so sexy. Mm. Oh, finish up. Dang, you took my train of thought. Girl, man. Still takes my breath away, huh? Woo! Ralph, you want to finish this? No, I'm just kidding. But it gives us an opportunity. So, so what opportunities are we missing? And so that's what we got to think about today is what opportunities are we missing? Open up your homes. We've been for, for years, we've been trying to, to encourage people to open up their homes and start a Bible study. And it's been hard. It's been hard. Because it seems like nobody has the time. But let me tell you something. Nobody's ever going to have the time. It's a sacrifice, right? Jesus didn't have the time to go to that cross. I'm sure he wanted something else. Like, Dan, you're going to go that route? Yep. It's a sacrifice. It's not easy getting together every week, every other week. It's not easy telling your work, mm, I can't work overtime today. I got the guys coming over. It's not easy. But it's beneficial. Because you get to see growth. You get to see things happen. You get to see lives change, lives transform. It's exciting. I was so excited. I was so proud to watch Ariana come up here and just, just how God was just using her and how she was just speaking. 
It's been, it's been amazing to watch Drew. Where's, where's the anointed one? Drew, where do you go? He's hiding. Oh, right there. It's been amazing. He's like, I'm getting ready to go on stage. I know you're coming to an end. Actually, I had like another 20 minutes, but uh, all right, I'll close up right now. It's been amazing to watch him, just the way that, that, that he's been growing, right? And you think he grew up in church. He's a pastor's kid. He should know everything. But it's been amazing watching him grow. It's been amazing watching what the Holy Spirit has been doing through him. It's been amazing watching Arturo grow. It's been amazing watching what God is doing in his life. Clarence shared the word of God at the men's breakfast, and I'm just like, wow, wow. And so when you begin to, to, to see these things, when you begin to see these lives change, you begin to see these lives excited, man, it is worth it. I would sacrifice everything to see that. I sacrificed it when we were when we were with the youth, and I look back now and I see some of these these uh, these these kids who were in our youth and how they've grown up to be adults and how some of them are ministering and some of them are in ministry and and how God is just doing and uh, in, in their lives and how how great people they are. It is an amazing thing to be able to sit back and just look and you're like, wow. We look at one, we're just like, wow. Man, what an amazing dad he turned out to be. Because when he was a teenager, man, this guy was a thorn in our side. He's like, man, this guy, is, man, ain't nobody ever going to put up with this guy. But it's been amazing to see what kind of person he grew up to be. It's awesome to be a part of people's lives. And so if you don't understand that, I encourage you, really think about it. Really do it and see what God does. We never know who we are being hospitable to. I'm going to close with this scripture, and then that's it. Worship me. You can come on up for real. Hebrews 13, 2, don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. For some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. You have entertained angels without even realizing it. I, talk, I was talking to my brother one day, and he was telling me this story that he, he had walked down the street over to a 7-Eleven, and as he was walking, this homeless guy came up to him. As he was walking back, this homeless guy walked up to him and was asking, like, hey, man, can I have some, can I have some money? I want some food. And, and for whatever he told him, like, oh, no, that's right. And he just, you know, he was too busy. He just, he just kept walking. And as he was walking, he just, something just told him, like, man, you need to go back. And you need to give this guy some, some money or you need to give him something to eat. And he goes, he goes, man, it wasn't, it wasn't even 10 seconds. It wasn't even 15 seconds that I turned around to go back to that alley that I had just passed where he, where he started to walk down. He goes, I go over there and it was a long alley. He goes, and he was gone. He goes, and I looked around and I couldn't see him. And he called me and he was all concerned. He's like, man, because he, he knows that scripture. He's like, dang, man, what am I going to do? You know, the, the God sent an angel to me to test me and, and I failed. And, you know, and, and so, so he began to, to panic and stuff like that. He's like, we never know. The other day I was talking to a coworker and, and he, the same thing just happened to him maybe, uh, maybe two weeks ago. He said him and his wife, uh, they were getting ready to go somewhere, and some guy uh, just walked up. He looked like he was home. I don't know why he always picks homeless people, but he, he was walking up, and he says he just wanted a, he just wanted a water. And so then, so then he, goes, he goes, oh, okay. He goes, all right. And he tells his wife, hey, go get him a water from, from the refrigerator, nice cold water. And she's like, well, why? There's, there's, there's waters right there. And, and that's it. He's like, no, just give him a cold water. And the guy goes, man, yeah, I'd like a cold water. So she goes in, gets him, gets him a cold water, and uh, you give it to him. They go off and get, do, do something else, and he goes in the house or something. And then he says when, when he got back, he said they were leaving. As they were leaving, he goes, oh, man, you know, it's weird because the, the guy looked at, uh, at my sweater that was sitting on a thing, and he's like, man, I don't have a sweater. And she just, like, ignored it, right? And it was like, oh, okay. And then they just drove off. So, and then it, it finally hit her like, dang, like, I mean, we got all kinds of sweaters in the house. So they drove back to look for him to see where he was at. And same thing, he was gone. We couldn't find him. They said they drove around looking for him to try and give him a sweater. And he was gone. It's like, we never know who we're entertaining. 
You never know who that stranger might be. You never know who that will, what that what that touch might do to that stranger. It might not be an angel, but it might be somebody who God is calling, amen, that is going to raise up to be this man of God that is going to touch thousands. But it all comes from having that heart to serve, having that heart of hospitality. Whether you have the gift like Ruby and Andrew or you just want to do it like Karina and I. Either way, it has to be done. And so I asked this morning, where are you at? Where are you at? Because I guarantee you that God is putting people in your life, even now, that he wants you to minister to. And you can't put it off on somebody else. You can't get somebody else to create a Bible study when God is calling you to do it. Let God deal with you. Let God encourage you. Deal is the wrong word because we think it's something bad. Let God encourage you because only good is going to come out of it. Walk around this week and really look for that stranger and be hospitable. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you this morning. I thank you, God, for all that you're doing in this place, Lord. I thank you for every heart that, that, that is beginning to, to, to grow for every heart that's excited right now. God, I pray that that excitement would just overflow into everybody else, Father. God, I pray that you would just help us, Lord, just to, to have that mentality, Lord, of being hospitable, God. That heart, Lord, that loves the stranger. That heart, God, that would accept even the craziest looking person into our homes. Lord, I pray right now, God, that as we close off and we sing this this song of worship, Lord, God, I pray that if you're dealing with somebody right now on, on this issue and you're challenging them to rise up, Lord, I pray that they would just come and just between you and them, between you and them, begin to show them and it doesn't even have to be things that involve this church there's things in your work I've been talking to, to Clarence and there's things that God has put into his heart about things that he can do at his work Lord I pray now God that it wouldn't just be a thought with Clarence Lord but that he would really look into this God because you wouldn't have given given them this idea, Lord, just to think about. You place ideas and thoughts into our hearts so that they can turn into action. So Lord, I pray that you would deal with him right now, Jesus. God, I pray that you would show him as he prays and he has been asking on what this is supposed to look like, God. I pray that you would show him and reveal to him what this is supposed to be. God, I pray for all those who who don't have that gift, God, that they would just step out anyways and just trust you, not on their ability, but on yours. Hallelujah. 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 And I'd never want to close without asking and giving the opportunity that if there's somebody here that you've never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. He's welcomed you into his home. He's welcoming you this morning. And he wants to eat with you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to develop a relationship with you. So is there anybody here who doesn't have a relationship with Christ and you want to do that this morning? 
Let me see you just raise your hand. Amen. If you have any prayer needs, we're here to pray for you. Amen. If you want to go about the hospitality, let God deal with you. The, 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 uh, the altar's open. Amen. But if you need prayer, we are here. We got the church leaders here that, that would love to pray with you and to help you, to encourage you. Amen. God is good. He loves you and he wants the best for you. Amen. Give God some praise this morning.